Hi there, Dead Ideal Boy here, back with another video. This time we're jumping into Daily Race C. This week's Daily Races is at Daytona, it's in Group 4, and the Bugatti Veyron is the car of choice, for me anyway, although there are some alternatives which you'll see here, the Ferrari being one of them, which are perfectly viable, the McLaren also, but the Veyron is topping the leaderboards and it was the, the choice I would decide to go for. However, this is on the US as at the time of recording this video basically the EMEA servers are pretty unreliable and the disconnects are just beyond well they're beyond silly to be honest with you so we're going to forget EMEA we're just going to race in the US we're going to try and get this account ranked back up because we have let it slip into the mid A rating and we want to get it back to A plus ASAP so here we are, tentatively off on our first race, and we're going to head round the first corner, and... Yep, that is how I started my first race, from pole, first corner of the week. Yep, that's all I really didn't need, <laughs> to be honest with you. Absolutely rip my confidence, and now... If that makes you feel in any way sorry for me whatsoever, then why not give me a little sympathy subscribe and help us get to 6,500 subscribers, I think is our next sort of mini goal, which would be awesome if you could help me get there, but yeah, all sympathy subscriptions are very much appreciated, as well as the non-sympathetic type. Anyway, we fend off this Ferrari now, coming round the right-hander of the infield, who almost got the run on me and we find ourselves from pole down to P8 so it's just going to be an absolute scrap now to try and fight your way back through but don't worry there is much worse to come than what you have just seen and witnessed on lap one turn one. Oh yes believe it or not it does get worse for me it might get better eventually but it certainly gets worse before it gets better so stick with me on this one It'll give you some entertainment, that's for sure. So, off we go down the back straight for the first time, heading up to the bus stop. Just going to try and tentatively send it in there. We know it can get a bit, well, it can get a bit messy as uh, people take it for the first time. And you can see somebody's over the grass here. And we're going to end up going three wide now as we go around the corner here. But we've got a position gained. So, we're up to P7 and we've got the, the beautifully liveried Haas Ferrari on our left hand side there and we're going to try and send it around the outside now the Bugatti Veyron has just got the straight line speed it's got those seven gears and the outright torque of this thing just eventually allows you to ease past just about every other car on the street and we're going to head down into the braking zone not really quite sure where to brake you can see here we just about keep it on the track there because if you run wide on that corner you can pick up a penalty now, that is something I was very, very aware of. You're also, well, very susceptible to power sliding if you get on the brakes too hard with this car. So you've got to really kind of feather the brake and brake as much as you can in a straight line before starting to turn in. Because if you start turning the wheels while it's braking, you will end up in a four-wheel power drift. And as spectacular as it can look, certainly does not help you gain any time on the track but we negotiated it far better than we did on lap one which is the main thing here because as I said my confidence was at an all-time low when we did that it's downright embarrassment as much as anything else but what I have found quite recently is that I'm I'm almost putting too much pressure on myself to perform well and get good results especially when I'm live streaming, um, which I've been doing quite regularly now. But that pressure is always there to try and get a good result. And even when I'm racing off stream, when I used to be quite relaxed doing it, I found myself again putting too much pressure on myself, trying to perform well. And it all just builds up and it's not conducive to good racing. You find yourself tense, you find yourself nervous before the start of a race. I don't know if there's, you know, if any of you out there feel the same way. Let me know in the comments if you do, but that, that kind of anxiety is almost off-putting. It can be debilitating. You really need to kind of push yourself through it. Now, what is also going to give me anxiety is trying to go around 
two cars here as we get nudged into the wall and we're going to head into the braking zone and it's potential for carnage here. We're going to brake nice and early, which we do. Get ourselves a bit of breathing space and see if we can pick off any scraps in the corners. But we have all negotiated through turn there just about in one piece and we're going to send it up the inside. But we back out. I had a feeling that I wasn't going to be afforded much room on the inside by... Viper Al and I was right as he cut across where I would have been which would have ultimately sent me onto the grass so we do back out and we live to fight another day as we head round here. We have set the fastest lap of the race though, We've got a 154.7 in the bag there so that did give me a little bit of confidence to kind of show that at this point I was the fastest man on the track so yeah a little, a small, small crumb of comfort there but a crumb of comfort nonetheless and yeah, that, those are the little things I was clinging on to um, as I was trying to find some pace around here and make my way back up towards the front of the pack. We're only, what, five seconds behind the leader, so there is still hope. We need to try and find a way past Viper Al first here, fellow Bugatti driver. And now we're going to go to the outside here and see if we've got enough momentum with a little bit of slip. And you can see here that we're going to go too wide into the bus stop. I back out. Again, I didn't think he was going to afford me any room, and he wouldn't have. He would have absolutely killed me if I had attempted to go side by side with him there. So now I kind of got the feeling about, you know, in terms of you get a sense of how the other drivers round about you sort of behave when they're racing close. So I'd quickly worked out that this guy wasn't really one for, you know, giving you much room and would send it if he felt like he had an opportunity to, to get the position or keep the position so yeah I, I was I was going to be tentative driving alongside him that's for sure so we go very wide here though making a bit of a meal of it but you can see there how deep he went there as he completely missed his brakes and almost left the track if I hadn't went really wide he would have took me out so yeah it was just one of those things we picked up a, a penalty for our trouble so a half second penalty, although we got past, and we were going to make our way there up to P4 briefly before we serve the penalty and fall back into P5. We have to now try and get the slipstream and use it here as we've got two cars. Yep, our friend Viper Al behind us again, and we're going to come into turn one. And I just thought to myself, I better leave him room because I don't think he'll get it stopped, and he probably wouldn't have got it stopped without hitting me if I had kept the defensive line. But he got it, you know. He did get it stopped on the apex and he got round the corner, so fair play to him in that occasion. Just means we're going to have to attempt once again to make it past him. Now, halfway through the race now, and we're going to just skip forward a little bit now to show you what happens at the end of lap five, because this was where things would... Where, well, you would seemingly think it couldn't really get much worse after the T1 lap one incident, but here we go, heading down... Going to complete lap five, we've got an opportunity here to perhaps pick up two spots as we go down the inside. And I actually thought at this point I had been hit by somebody, but I couldn't understand why because as far as I could see, there was nobody else round about me in terms, you know, other than the two cars in front of me. But I couldn't understand what happened. It just really shook me <laughs> um, because it felt like a hit. I ended up in the wall facing the wrong way, you know, with damage all over my car. Uh, it just baffled me. I So at this point here, I'm really quite shook up, to be honest with you, in terms of just wondering what's just happened to me here. Who hit me? Why did they hit me? Where did they come from? Where did they go? That sounds like a, a song from the 90s called Cotton Eye Joe. But anyway, forget that. We just need to try and understand that something happened. I'm just going to have to try and get it out of my head and continue because there's still four or five laps left of this race and we've got a Ferrari all over the front of us there just defending for its life. So we're going to have to try and now get past a number of cars even to get into the mid-pack and to say that I was frustrated with my performance here is yeah, it's an understatement. Now we're going to try and go up the side here but we inadvertently just end up bumping the Ferrari along and we just have to hang back now and hope that we can just get a good run out of the bus stop and we'll pick up the position here so you can see here we're going to go into the bus stop 
Ferrari's going to get it a little bit wrong there goes wide we get a great run through but that only serves to bump draft the Ferrari again inadvertently so I can I can honestly say if you could have seen me on camera at this point you would have seen me driving along here with my head my forehead firmly against the steering wheel just in disbelief frustration annoyance just I just felt like quitting the race and that's all I felt like doing at this point but I didn't we kept going and you can see up ahead there's going to be a little three way battle there into turn one as the Ferrari goes really wide there manages to just about hold it on the track they should pick up a penalty for that but don't so I'm not sure what happened there but anyway they've escaped the punishment of the penalty which we didn't seem to there must, so there must be track limits somewhere and then not somewhere or if you go wide or don't gain time I don't, I don't really know there must be something to do with the track limits there so it is what it is but again still still got that fastest lap we still know we've got a bit of pace nobody's managed to improve on it yet so we'll just have to try and stick with it here you can see these two are going to get a little bit side by side here a little bit of door banging Aston Martin obviously not too pleased about that is it going to you know he's going to basically just send it right back up the inside there so I could see that I was now involved in a race that I really didn't want to be involved in because it was getting a, a little bit testy between these guys and now we've got a slipstream battle going on here as the Aston Martin drops down into the inside giving me a slip so hopefully it's going to be enough to help me get past a friend in the Ferrari to the right hand side over here but he then goes over gives the Ferrari a bit of slip gives me a little bit of slip so playing a little bit of a game there but we're going to come up to the bus stop now just in front of the Ferrari and this time not going to back out but you can see here we managed to go too wide we give them enough space and out we come the other side so it can be done there you go two people going side by side through the bus stop giving each other the room and the respect that you need to give if you're going to go you know too wide through that that part of the track so just a note to the driver who did not afford me the same respect but anyway there we are so we've got the run now we've got the superior power now as we come across the line for the end of lap 7 to begin lap 8 we've managed to get ourselves back up to P9 and we're starting to find a little bit of a flow you know I started to feel like there was you know a little bit of pace in me as I said the fastest lap still hadn't been beaten so skipping forward you can see here when we come across the line finish the race we'd managed to get another position and finish in P8 it was a bit of a you know, let's face it it was a disaster of a race and this is why, um, apart from the turn one incident, which was all my fault, but here, you see, we hit the invisible wall that exists on the track. So there was no hit from another car. You can see here, if you hit that white line just before where the Ferrari ahead is turning in, you'll hit a wall. Now, I feel that the game should maybe have something, you know, a little bit more there to warn you about that, but it doesn't. So watch you don't die. Anyway... On to the next race, we went again and we led the race for 9 of the 10 laps before we got a penalty and lost the lead on the last lap. So yeah, things were getting worse, but we did then go again a third time and you can see there, we finally won the race. We got there in the end with a quite comprehensive 5 second victory and we took the win. So, it wasn't all bad. We managed to find a little bit of pace in the end, and generally it was a really good fun race. It's just a shame that the servers in the EMEA are pretty poor at the moment, so hopefully they improve them for manufacturers racing coming up, and yeah, it'll hopefully work itself out. But there you go, that was the trials and tribulations of racing in Daily Race C for me this week, so watch out for that invisible wall of death, because it could ruin your race if you don't watch this video. Take heed. But anyway, thank you for watching, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so, and yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of the racing this week, and what you think about things like invisible walls, and give me some cheer. But anyway, yeah, thank you very much once again, and I'll see you all on the next one. Goodbye.